Sutra, I wish now to achieve the result and become an honored king, who then returns to save as many beings as there are sand grains in the Ganges. I offer this deep thought to those who are as countless as the moss of dust of the Buddha lands to repay the kindness shown me by the Buddha. Commentary, I wish now to achieve the result and become an honored king. Who is the honored king? The honored king is the Buddha. What is the result? The result is Buddhahood. He wishes to become a Buddha who then returns to save as many beings as their sand grains in the Ganges. These two lives contain the four vast vows. I wish now to achieve the result and become an honored king. Includes two vows. Dhamma doors are limitless. I vow to study them all. And the Buddha way is unsurpassed. I vow to accomplish it. And then return to save as many beings as they are sent grains in, grains in the Ganges. Includes the vows. Living being about this, I vow to take them across. And the afflictions are endless. I vow to cut them off. If you are to save living beings, you first have to cut off your afflictions. If you don't cut off your afflictions, then you not only fail to take living beings across, but you are taken across by them. Why? Each living being has its own nature. Each is different. Some are stop born. You say something to them and they are extremely obstinate. No matter what dharma you speak for them, they don't listen. Basically, you should be able to take them across, but they don't listen to your teaching. Or at that time, you will give rise to affliction, if you haven't already cut off affliction. Oh, you're obstinate. Well, I'd be even more obstinate than you. Then afflictions arise. You cannot teach and transform living beings. That's what's meant by being taken across by living beings instead of taking them across. If you want to take living being across, you have to cut off the afflictions. You have to look upon living beings as children. You should not blame living beings with their evil natures for being the way they are. And of course, you should gather in and receive all living beings who have good natures. When you teach, you definitely have to cut off your afflictions. So first you wish to obtain the fruition of Buddhahood and accomplish the Buddha's way and then you wish to return and save all beings. I offer this deep thought to those who are as countless as the most of dust of the Buddha lands. I now offer my deep mind, not a shallow mind, but a mind which brings forth the resolve of a Bodhisattva of the great Rihaiko, so the Buddhas and to living beings as numerous as the most of dust in the Buddha lands. I offer my deep mind to living beings so that their wishes can be fulfilled and all that they seek can be obtained. I don't make offerings only to Buddhas and not to living beings, because living beings are simply Buddhas. If living beings are simply Buddhas, you wonder, then why bother to cultivate? That's just like a certain person who says that we are all Buddhas. Right, you are a Buddha, but you have to cultivate before you become a Buddha. If you don't cultivate, but just keep saying from morning to night, I'm a Buddha, I'm a Buddha, I'm a Buddha. It is of no use at all. You have to, you have, to have true skill for it to count. So the person who claimed we are all Buddha said, You are a Buddha. The Buddha has three bodies, four kinds of wisdom, five eyes and six spiritual penetrations. How many bodies do you have? How many kinds of wisdom? How many eyes do you have? How many penetrations? You can't fake it. I offer this deep thought to those who are countless as the most of dust of the Buddha lands. In order to repay the kindness shown me by the Buddha, this is my opportunity to repay the Buddha's kindness and to show that I am grateful to the Buddha. Sutra, in obeisance, I ask the world honored one to certify my vow to first answer the five turbulent evil realms. 
if there is even one being who hasn't become a Buddha, the death I will not reach for Nirvana. Commentary obeisance means placing a five limbs on the ground in prostration and ask he requests. The world honored one to satisfy me. He wanted to offer this his deep thought to beings as cowbies as the most of dust in the Buddha lands in order to repay the Buddha's kindness. But if he had merely said it himself and no one had acted as certifier, it wouldn't have counted. Someone definitely had to certify him. Therefore, he asked the Buddha to be his certifier so that in the future he would certainly be able to carry out his intention. He wanted the Buddha to certify his vow to first enter the five turbid evil realms. When the human realm, when the human lifespan reaches 200,000, when will that happen? You ask it incredulously. If you don't believe there can be a time when people live to be 200,000, you should walk into the time when there is a lifespan of 200,000 years and take a look. Then you'll know for sure that there are people who live to be 200,000 years old. Then the time comes that people have 200,000 year lifespans. The human lifespan begins to decrease by one year every 100 years and the average body height decreases by one inch every 100 years. When the lifespan has decreased to a length of 200 years, that is the beginning of the period of the five turbid evil realms. Before the defined and unclean time of the five turbidities, the world is very pure, just as Wu Tai Mountain is now called the Clean Kung World. In the future, the world will continue to change, and after several thousand years, Wu Tai Mountain may not be called Clean and Kung. It may be called the hot, noisy world. It's not for sure. What are the five turbidities? The first is the turbidity of the Kampa. Kampa is a Sanskrit word that is interpreted as a division of time. How does the Kampa become turbid? At the time of the five turbid evil realms, the evil Kampa of living beings makes the Kampa turbid. The second turbidity is views. In the past, people saw everything as clean, but when the turbid compa arrives, people see things as unclean. The turbidity of views is composed of the five quick servants. A view of the body, prejudiced views, views of prohibitions, views of views, and deviant views. The view of a body, all living beings are attached to having bodies. They love their bodies. I certainly have to take care of myself. I can't let anything happen to me. They look upon their own bodies as extremely important. They want to wear good clothes, eat good food, live in a good place. They always look upon their bodies as priceless gems. Right, your body is a priceless gem, but if you misuse it, your priceless gem turns into something not even as good as excrement. Why? Because you tend only to its superficial aspects and don't discover the true gem of the self nature. So, all you know is that your body is yours and you can't put it down. From morning to night, you are busy on behalf of your body. That's the view of a body. Prejudiced views favor one side or the other. If you don't favor emptiness, then you favor existence. In general, it means not being in accord with the middle way. The third quick servant is a view of prohibitions. Precepts can turn into something bad when they are based on mistaking for a cause something that is not a cause. Such a mistake leads to the cultivation of non-beneficial ascetic practices. I explained earlier how some people imitate the habits of cows or dogs or sleep on beds of nails or undertake other non-beneficial ascetic practices. People who do this have a view of prohibitions. See me, they think I hold precepts. None of you can do what I do. You can't compare to me. They always have this arrogance in their minds. The fourth is a view of views or grasping of views. 
This is to mistake for an effect something that is not an effect. People with this problem think they have obtained effects which they have not obtained. The fifth is Devian views. People with the Devian knowledge and views are always thinking about things in an improper way. These are the five quick servants which comprise the turbidity of views. The third turbidity is the turbidity of afflictions, which is composed of the five slow servants, greed, hatred, stupidity, pride, and doubt. Greed refers to an insatiable greed for pleasant experiences. You are greedy for the things you like. Hatred is the dislike of unpleasant situations. Stupidity means stupid false thoughts. Pride refers to arrogance and self-satisfaction, the feeling that I am the greatest and no one is equal to me. Arrogant people have no courtesy toward others. Doubt refers to doubt of the genuine drama and a reverence for improper dramas instead. Such people doubt the true and rely on the false. They doubt the proper drama and believe in genuine dramas. These are the five slow servants, which comprise the third turbidity, that of afflictions. The existence of these five dumb servants carries a lot of affliction. The fourth turbidity is that of living beings. Living beings let's not even try to express with. Why? Living beings are just too filthy, too unclean, too impure. You shouldn't think of yourself as being so terrific. Living beings are murky and turbid. There's nothing so good about them. But living beings think of themselves as something really special, despite the fact that they comprise the fourth kind of turbidity. The fifth turbidity is the turbidity of a lifespan. Our mundane lives, our destinies are impure. Another allows the first and the five turbid evil realms to teach and transform living beings. Shakyamuni Buddha went into the five turbid evil realms to teach and transform living beings and his disciple Ananda probably wanted to emulate his teacher's great awesome energy and do the same. He was not afraid that the five turbid evil realms were defiling and he came anyway to teach living beings. If there is even one being who hasn't become, become a Buddha, a death I will not reach for Nibbana. If there is just one living being who hasn't become a Buddha, I won't become a Buddha either. I won't be certified as having attained the fruition. I won't enter Nibbana. This is like the vow of the treasury Bodhisattva made. When all living beings are saved, I will accomplish Bodhi. As long as the house aren't empty, I vow not to become a Buddha. Earth Treasury Bodhisattva is in the house with the hungry ghost. He says that as long as the house aren't empty, he won't become a Buddha. He will definitely wait. When will the house be empty? Don't worry about him. They'll be empty when they're empty. Before they're empty, no matter how much you worry, Earth Treasury Bodhisattva won't become a Buddha. He will wait. Sutra May the exalted hero's awesome strength, his kindness and compassion search out and dispel even the most subtle of my doubts. Commentary May the exalted hero's awesome strength, his kindness and compassion, the great hall, the main Buddha hall is called the jeweled hall of the great heroes. The great hero can break all living beings' subtle delusions, confusion, and ignorance. The great hero can break up living beings' fundamental ignorance, severing it as its origin. With the awesome strength, the great hero can pull all living beings out of affliction which originates in ignorance. Kindness and compassion, this is an impartial kindness which is granted even to those with whom one has no conditions. It is universal kindness, with equal kindness toward all living beings. The Buddha's bestow of bliss upon everyone, with a great compassion of being of one substance with all. They pull living beings out of every kind of suffering and bestow upon them ultimate bliss. 
the animal living beings to understand their original faith. That's what is called great kindness toward those with whom one has no conditions. Great compassion toward those who are of the same substance. Bodhisattvas take across those with whom they have conditions. Bodhisattvas have the compassion to save those with whom they have no conditions. Bodhisattvas say, I rescue all those who have affinities with me. They are selective. Bodhisattva Buddhas are not selective. They save all living beings, whether they have conditions with them or not. The fewer affinities they have, the more they want to save them. Why? If they don't rescue those without affinities, they will never gain affinities with them. Affinities being, come into being from one's wanting to establish them. So Buddhas have the great compassion which includes those without affinities. They save all living beings. I wish the world honored one would use the power of his great heroism, his great strength, his great kindness and compassion to search out and dispel even the most subtle of my doubts. The things I can't uncover, the things I don't understand, my doubts, afflictions, and ignorance. Buddha, if I have these subtle doubts, please dispel them. Sutra, causing me to quickly attain the supreme enlightenment and sit in the bodhimanda of the ones of the ten directions. Commentary, causing me, Ananda, to quickly attain the supreme enlightenment the Buddha way and sit in the bodhimanda of the walls of the ten directions. I will go throughout the walls of the ten directions to teach and transform living beings and establish bodhimandas. Sitting in the bodhimanda, I will turn the Dharma Vibhong to teach and transform living beings. Sutra should even the Shunyata nature entirely melt away. This paramita will never waver. Commentary. Shunyata is a Sanskrit word which means emptiness. Should even the nature of emptiness entirely melt away, could emptiness completely disappear? Basically, emptiness isn't there in the first place. How could it disappear? Ananda brings up the analogy. His meaning is that emptiness can't disappear, but if it could, even if the Shunyata nature melts away. Nevertheless, this environment will never waver. The solid environment is the Suragama King, the durable mind. It will remain unmoved. Now I believe the Buddha Dharma and I have obtained my true mind, my durable mind in Samadhi. This is what Ananda is saying. It is my decisive resolve to become a Buddha, a resolve that is, is uh, eternally unmoving.